Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being your show, it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Ozark Season 4, Episode 11. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, Marty's back from Mexico, but you could tell, like, when he was seeing Camilla talk to Javi's lawyer, even early in the episode, he was almost looking like, what's that about? But it's not till he came back home talking to Wendy and Charlotte, you know, having dinner. And, you know, Charlotte's asking how everything's going. He was like, oh, it's fine. And she's like, if it wasn't fine, would you tell me? And he says, absolutely. And Wendy would, and says no. Once again, just like, ugh. That divide just grows stronger and stronger. It's just, they are never like 100% on the same wavelength. They haven't been on the same wavelength for a while now. Uh, but it just, it comes in ebbing flows. Like, they go through long stretches of not being on the same side. Then they eventually come together. But then they find themselves constantly stuck in this cycle. But now, with everything... Marty now believes that Camilla is the one that was responsible for putting the hit out on Navarro. And he feels bad about it because, I mean, he's always struggling with the fact is he ordered someone's death. He's always been inadvertently tied to people dying. I mean, Ruth killed someone to protect him. But it's another thing like you ordered a man's death. Like that's something else. Because, I mean, Wendy's done it before, but Marty's never done it. Because I do believe there is a part of Marty that thinks, like, regardless of the terrible stuff I've done, he beats himself up on it. But I think he wants to believe, like, right, I've done some bad stuff, but I've never fully crossed the line. This is me crossing a line, him crossing a line he's never gone before. Like I say, he's been inadvertently connected to people's death, but he's never been directly responsible, like, in this regard. He literally ordered someone's death, and that doesn't sit well with him. Now he finds out, wait, it was an innocent person? Once again, it's screamed it was either Camilla or the priest that would take advantage of it. And even, he's like, yeah, she acted like everything was okay, but she's still under the impression that Navarro killed her son, so that's all the amu the all the uh, motive she needs to like be gunning for him. And things get complicated later on because he gives them, um, he gives the FBI a, a shipment that's going to New Orleans, and even Hannah being like, hey, had you thought about making this a permanent situation, you running things in Mexico? Marty was like, yeah, no, 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 Navarro's going to recover. He does not want that job in any shape or form. It's like he was there for a week. It is the most stressful thing. And yes, and the only reason why they let him do what he wants is because he's Navarro's middleman. He's the one that handles stuff in Navarro's stead. He's uh, his attache, I guess, would be the, or liaison might be the better word. Um but it's like, yeah, like, would Marty, I mean, I guess the argument, the, the what Hannah's probably thinking is like, no, still be Navarro's main per like, what would you do, like, put Marty in that position, and then like, what, Navarro would want his power back, he wouldn't just, but I guess, like, as long as I'm here, I'm stuck in my situation, I guess they'll, they'll slow roll Navarro's return to Mexico, so that Marty, because Marty's a lot more amendable, he's someone that they can control a little bit better, it's a little bit probably better optically, and it serves their purposes better to have Marty there, but Marty's like, no, oh, fuck that, I, I want nothing to do with that. But, you know, he, he handles it in a very uh, tactful way. Uh, but then it turns out that shipment was empty. And then the moment um, Marty covered for it, I was like, oh, was that true? It's like, nope, it's 100% BS. He was coming covering for Camilla because she's the one that messed with the shipment. So, and he's like, right, the last person I saw her talk to was Javi's lawyer. It's like, she's trying to flush us out because she's trying to, like, get rid of them. So there's no nothing between, no one there safeguarding Navarro, um, and then she's going to, like, go for power, it's like, right, this is my son's operation, he's dead now, granted, Navarro had nothing to do with his death, he took advantage of the situation, but, yeah, he had nothing to do with it, it's a good thing Ruth still isn't, like, in the know, like, because if Camilla found out, she would, had strong, like, she had speed, full speed ahead towards Ruth, I still think that might be the end result. I don't think Navarro's, I don't think Omar's making it out of this season. I, I mean, out of this series. I think he's going to die and Camilla's going to get everything and I think she's going to find out the truth that Ruth's actually the one that killed her um, son and she's going to come gunning for Ruth because Ruth is fine now because she even says it later on. The birds can't tell on her without exposing themselves. So, you know, because she doesn't know that, because she's still out of the loop, so she doesn't know that Navarro, in the general consensus of things, is taking the responsibility for Javi's death, even though she's the one that pulled... Not unless they make the argument that, like, oh, Ruth pulled the trigger for Navarro, not unless that ends up being a spin that ends up happening later, but... Marty's in this very comp complicated situation. It's like, dude, it's just like, everything with Wendy is hitting a fever pitch, because, first and foremost... 
they have a sit down with Ruth who wants to talk business, which initially Wendy wants nothing to do with it, but it's about, you know, she has an offer. Turns out she brings, like, at first I was like, the person she went to go visit, I was like, who is it? I was like, is it going to end up being her mom or something like that? Once again, I think in retrospect, like, I think it got brought up in the first half of the season. I think her mom is dead. No, I don't remember in, in the first half. Uh, if that I know it came up, but I don't remember now. Um, regardless, when she comes to visit someone and it's Rachel, I was like, oh my god! She's like, oh, I haven't seen you in over a year. I'm like, yeah, we haven't seen you since season two. Holy shit! To bring that back, to bring back like the Tuck situation too, because we haven't even touched the blue cat in forever, and they're bringing. I'm like, oh my god, you're closing up every, you're closing up everything, bringing them back into the fold. I thought that was so interesting. I want to say last. I want to. I'm trying to remember what the most recent thing I saw Jordan Spiro. I want to say it was like. I think she popped up in the ending of um, Blind Spot, right? I think that was like the most recent thing I'd seen her in. So I was like, it's kind of crazy. Like, oh my god, here, holy crap! And she's doing good. Uh, she's working in Florida, living in Florida. But I mean, granted, things aren't that great. But Ruth brought her back so that because Ruth is a felon, she can't put her name on the licensing to the. Uh, Missouri Bell, uh, the the casino, but Rachel can, and so Ruth wants to buy them out. And Marty's like, he's like, I, I don't even love Marty. Bell. Hey, how you doing? Oh my God, you look great. So how was it going? Things going? It's like I'm so, so, really. And then the, like Wendy's almost like, uh, uh, excuse me, because Marty's always had a special affinity for Rachel. Like that was always kind, that was kind of a thing back in season one and two. So he's always had a like soft spot for her. So he's probably like, hey. And Wendy's just like, can we get back to fucking business? Uh, you could catch up later. In fact, just don't catch up at all. And. Obviously, because of their circumstances, they're like, right, you know we can't give you the casino, but we can, like, work on the percentages and stuff. Marty was at least willing to go, like, hey, maybe we can work this out. Because Schaefer, apparently things are complicated. His push to try and get Navarro off the, what's it, the SDN list is not going well because there's officials in Mexico pushing back against it. So it's like, right, if we don't make this move soon, it's going to keep him on the list. It's just going to screw everything up. Plus, they need the money circulating, which Wendy's trying to make that happen. Which Marty's like, dude, Ruth, it's offering us a chance. We can, we don't even have to go through the whole Shaw thing, but Wendy's stubborn as hell. She's trying to say like, oh, a uh, Ruth's a temporary solution to a long-term problem. It's like, at the very least, Ruth will be a buffer to give you more time to figure things out rather than kind of rushing head first. But Wendy has to be the one in control. She's kind of a bit of a control freak. And so she, it's also she has issues with Ruth. Her and Ruth don't see eye to eye. It's Once again, it's like, right, this is someone that did a lot for you. This is someone you once cared, claimed to care about. It seems like everyone in the family except for Wendy is the only one that still cares about Ruth in that regard. Doesn't just see her as like a, oh, she's like everyone genuinely, you know, Charlotte. Jonah and Marty. Jo Jonah and Marty in particular, they are people, they are the birds who've worked with her the most and they have a, a, an affinity for her. Because for Marty, it's like he sees Ruth almost like a daughter. Um, so, when it's all said and done, when you just can't get past her own pride and it's like, fuck that. I'm not getting any help from Ruth. Fuck that. No, so she's steadfast in her own way of handling things. So, what does she do? She does the exact same thing Thing that Marty told her not to do, and that's work with Camilla. It's like, I literally told you she might be the, she not might be, it's definitely the one responsible for screw, uh, trying to kill Navarro. And what do you do? You invite her into her home, because I love that Nelson is so smug about it. It's like, oh, you have a guest. And the moment uh, Marty walks in there, he smiles. It's like, uh, you're going to get blindsided by this. Uh, it's like, does Nelson know more than he lets on? Or is he just going to be like, oh, I can't wait for this look on your face, Marty. Uh, but Marty's just like, what are you doing? Like, but... Once again, um, when he's under this impression, like, oh, we can control Navarro. He's, he, he, we can get him under control. And Marty's clear about it being like, no, we can't. He has never been under our control. He, he will never be under our control. He's too much of a sociopath. He's too much of a monster. The fact is, he's not someone you can control. And But Wendy still thinks so. I think because also, you know, he has... He used to, I guess not as much, but he used to have a special affinity for Wendy and just her approach to things, so. But Wendy's trying to use Camilla to kind of force Shaw's hand, which it worked. It's like, yo, oh, this is the sister of a car cartel head, uh, leader. Show some respect, Shaw. I mean, Claire. So, 
kind of forces Claire's hand. It's like, oh, cool. We're going to get that money. That's awesome. Um, on top of that, you should also know, like, we are going to expect the rest of the money, but we'll take that in installments. So, and then she finds out about the truck situation. And it's like Marty saying, like, right, she's trying to flush this out. This is, it's like, you know, but Wendy's like, we can't, we can't bite. We can't do that now because they've already, she already put everything in motion with Claire. So it's like, right, we can't back out now because we still need her. If we cut ties with her right now, uh, she gets a feeling like Claire is going to back out. So, but it's like, Wendy constantly keeps putting them in a situation like that where they, she just keeps digging the hole deeper and deeper for them. So, and then when they go talk to Navarro, what happens is like, oh, maybe you should get Camilla to take control over things. You're Marty looking like, what the fuck are you doing, Wendy? And Wendy's justification is like, right, that way you don't have to go back to, um, uh, you don't have to go back down to Mexico. And it's like, so let's put the woman in charge who's tried to kill her brother, who we know is trying to push us out of the operation so she can take care of everything herself. It's like, cool, Wendy. Super cool. And, you know, jumping ahead, like, no wonder Marty exploded like he did. I mean, it's just one thing after another. I even love that he opened up, he finally opened up to Charlotte. Charlotte's like, are you actually okay? It's like, yeah, it's mom, isn't it? She went off and did something again. And he's just like, no, it's like, he's like, actually, I lied to you. He's like, I, um, I made a big mistake in, uh, Mexico and now uh, Navarro's sister is in a position, and she's the one that tried to kill him. And he's just like, every time I do something, he's like, I'm, your mom wants to take charge. She wants to be in the driver's seat. That's fine. But she's just like, every time I want to do something different, she gets pissed at me. And then when I just let her do her own thing, it's just, that's just, he's just like, what, what can I do? It's like, I can't fucking win. It's like, it's, it's a constantly uphill battle. And he just like, he just, He's just de so defeated when it comes to Wendy. It's like, what can I do? It's just like, no matter what I do, she goes off and does some asinine thing if I leave her alone for too long. It's just like, I don't know what is going through that woman's mind. Like, why she makes the decision. Wendy, ha I don't think has always... Wendy, especially lately, I feel like this season in general, like, she's made some questionable choices in the past too, but I feel like this season in particular, I feel like she's real, like... So much shit is going sideways because of Wendy. Her own stubbornness, her like, her pride, her ego. Her the fact is that she, her ambition. It's like you're just as ambitious as um, freaking um, hobby is. Right? Like there's so many parallels you can make in that regard. Um, and I think maybe there's going to be an even bigger parallel you can make with like Camilla and Wendy. Like they're kind of two peas in the same pod, a pe two peas in a pod type of situation. And I love that, like, when he's, I mean, Marty's like, I'm sorry, Charlotte. Like, I'm supposed to be, you shouldn't have to worry about me. And she's like, and Charlotte's almost like, holy shit, dad. She's like, maybe you should, you know, see that therapist again. The moment that line came up, I laughed. I was like, oh, ugh, oh, you don't know about that, do you? He's just like, Marty's just kind of, like, he pauses for a couple seconds. Yeah, she's, uh, she's retired, so, and Charlotte immediately goes, like, oh, okay. He's like, yeah, that's no longer an option. She, Charlotte's like, I, I, I get that. It's like, yeah, that uh, therapist is super dead. She kind of went about things in an asshole way, too. And so she kind of got uh, bit the big one as well. So so things suck on that front. Then you had the whole, once again, well, Wendy was able to dissuade uh, Rachel from working with Ruth to some extent by being like, yeah, about bringing up the whole killing Navarro thing. It's like, right, this is also trying to screw us over. But Rachel decides to help out because she finds out that Tuck doesn't work at the Blue Cat because Marty didn't keep his promise to look after him. I and mean, to be fair, Marty's been dealing with so much family drama, so much cartel stuff. He's juggling so much. But then, like, you know, Rachel's like, we're all busy. It's like, yeah, but Marty's definitely busy. But also, like, Tuck always liked Marty. And, you know, Tuck even said, like, oh, I never wanted to bother Marty about stuff. So he's like, oh, I, Marty's like, if I'd known, I would have given him a job in, like, two seconds. So for her, this is an opportunity to screw over the birds. And so, Ruth has made it clear she's not going to do Darlene's, uh, the, the, the whole deal with Shaw was like a one-time deal. And so, she has no uh, no interest in going back into that uh, Darlene's heroin business. Um, but she's going to, because Rachel is working with her just because like, both of them have every motive to try and screw over the birds. And so because Wyatt and Darlene were married and Darlene had a stake in the casino, we end up finding out that 
because Ruth was his guardian, she ends up having a legal stake to it. Um, but it's it's the casino that's going to be the bigger issue. And so it's like, right, if you want to make this happen, make it yours, you're going to have to call in a big favor so they get like Charles Wilkes involved because Jonah points them in the right direction. So we see them meeting up with him later. So that's definitely going to be interesting as they're making their power play while the birds are still in the dark about all that going down. And then we had the whole Mel continuing to investigate, and you knew he was going to complicate things. I knew the truth would come up eventually, considering like just the fact that he ended up at that restaurant alone. So he brought it to Nathan's attention, which Nathan then confronts Wendy about it. And, and Wendy kind of has no one else to blame. Like her power plays is what started. Like she's the one that put Ben in this like missing person and made a whole thing of it. Like she tried to. Her and Darlene back and forth, and then she spun it out into this whole thing, too. So, it's kind of her fault. And that's also another thing, because, like, Marty's like, on top of all that, we got to deal with this whole fucking Ben situation. So, now, she her dad confronts her about it, and it's like, right, uh, me and Ben got into an argument. I left, and then he didn't pick up. He's wanted, he's got warrants out for him back home, so he's on the run. And she's like, justifying, like, man, like, Wendy, like... You think all this lying would eventually like get to you and just like, you know, and her their dad is talking about like, right, I've done my best to raise both of you children. And she's like, Yeah, you kind of drove me away from home, which I'm almost like, that's ironic coming from you. Uh, do you not see the irony behind that? You literally drove your own son away from home. Can't you see the parallels there? And she just says, huh, when her dad storms off because he's like, well, you weren't easy to love. It's like, oh, cool, 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 cool. What every child wants to hear from their parents. So to be fair, it's not like Wendy had the best relationship with her dad to begin with. And for her, it's like, don't pretend like you care, or like you haven't been the greatest father. But maybe he was better with Ben, but still doesn't justify him being a garbage person towards her. Which is even sadder because uh, Jonah's like talking to uh, Marty earlier in the episode after he got back from Mexico. He's like, yeah, sorry, I didn't go home for dinner. He's like, no, I get it. Because he's like, you wanted to avoid, because it's like his main reason for not going would be Wendy and just that'd be a complicated mess. But he's like, yeah, dad's, uh, grandpa's not as bad as mom makes him out to be. And you have Marty probably like, yeah, your mom has her complications. But at the end of the day, like your grandfather ain't no ain't all sunshine and roses he's not like the best person he's done especially when wendy talks about some of the past stuff and you know so marty he probably sides with wendy but it's also like he also looks at nathan as a bit of a nuisance because it's like yeah you're here really pushing this whole ben thing and it's just like yeah that's another thing because he tries to justify even to charlotte being like yeah your mom uh, might not always agree with what she does but at the very least she does mean well she does in her own way but um I think that's going to be the irony behind it. It's just when that's all said and done, like maybe Wendy's just the fact that she can't even recognize her, her Jonah situation is very much a repeat of her and her own father. But, you know, she is her father's daughter, you know, so I, I don't know if that's really clicking in her. Uh, I don't think she's really got that perspective on it yet. I mean, it's it's hard to really, like, yeah, she's dealing with her emotions and her issues towards her dad, but for her, it's like, no, the Jonah thing's so completely different. It's like, yeah, but you did something horrible just like your dad was horrible to you. Like, you did something horrible to him. You killed, essentially, his best friend, Ben, so how close they were. So it's like, yeah, and he lo covered it up. He lied about it, so... And the way she's been acting and talking to him this season is like, of course, Jonah's gonna have enough. But, I, once again, I think it's interesting because, once again, Marty is kind of on good terms with his kids. Charlotte's like, Dad, I hope you're okay. Jonah's like, because Marty's like, yeah, you need money? Uh, probably not. You need groceries? Okay, you good. Need me to drop you off at school? Okay, but if you ever need anything, just let me know. It's just like, you know, I love you. And it's, I, I think that's sweet, trying to validate things between, like, despite all the craziness going on, you know I love you kids. I love you to death. I love you guys so much. So, we'll see how that plays out. Um... But especially because Nathan later on, the moment he's talking to Annalise, he's like, no, I want to pray by myself. I want to be alone right now. I'm like, you're going to go off and do some debaucherous shit, aren't you? Which I think it's it's in his nature. Like he he puts up the God fearing, like holy man front. But it's like that's probably like uh, uh, burying kind of like the darker nature and darker side of himself. So. The fact is that we see at the end, he pulls out a whole bunch of little uh, shop bottles and he's about to probably knock those back. And you're like. So that's going to turn into something. So either I think that's going to lend itself to Jonah's statement this episode. Like, oh, grandpa's not that bad. I think what's going to end up happening is Jonah's going to see the side of his grandfather that Wendy's seen. 
that he hasn't. He, oh, you've seen good, nice, lovable grandfather. You've never seen him when he's he, when he gets nasty, when he gets mean. And I think that might be where we uh, head that, in that direction. And so, and he might once again might get up to some other debauchery stuff, and that might also complicate things even more later on. We'll see. I just, I think Nathan's going to prove to be an even bigger thorn going forward. Uh, you have Mel. He ran into. Uh, Nelson, when they were when he was dropping off the birds, and Mel recognized him from the security footage, and now working with Maya. Maya's still on the back burner when it comes to the feds, but she's like, nah, you know what? Screw that. Go full throttle. Like it's like right because she knows Nelson, and it's like right what this might have all been connected to. So Mel's going to go even deeper, and you're like, okay, that's going to be even more issues. That's going to be even more problems. It's just one thing after another, and like I said, circling back to it, Marty at the end, losing his shit like that, I thought that was so interesting. This episode was, I don't, I just thought that was interesting, just like, I was like, oh, always, always, regardless, I just, I was like, oh, Laura Lenny uh, uh, directed this episode, I thought that was just, I just thought that was interesting, but uh, Marty's just so upset with her, he's in the car, she's trying to talk to him, she's just turning up the music, she's like, oh, you're just gonna drown me out, then there's the traffic thing, I'm like, oh, Marty's about to burst, Marty's about to go lose his shit, and I love that whole, like, in confrontation with that guy, and it's just kind of like, you know what, you want, he's like, let's go, he's like, I could have someone kill you, and it's like, what'd you say, he's like, what, do you want me to repeat it, and Wendy's both escalating and trying to de-escalate this situation, and the guy calls her a fucking bitch, she's like, suck my cock, motherfucker, or something, asshole, or something like that, I love it, I was like, ah, Dane's got a little, I mean, Marty landed the first punch, but he's like, ow, because he messed up his hand, probably didn't, you know, I'm sure someone could break down, like, ah, oh, you should have done better, you had better form with your punch, yada, 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 but, then, like, Wendy started getting involved, and he was, like, about to get on top of Wendy, which is, like, yo, like, that's kind of, that's something else, bro. You about to, like, hit, beat, on, beat on a woman, like, you know. But then, like, Marty started laying into him, and you see Wendy standing there, like, oh, shit. Because you've never seen Marty. What's getting? Marty's definitely got his darker side. He just doesn't always, he keeps it, he buries up, he buries a lot of shit. So, I find that so fascinating. He starts, like, beating the ever-living shit out of punch, 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 punch. And he's just, uh, Wendy's just shocked, and Marty just walks away. Because, like I said, it's just, it's been building and building, and he just finally exploded. You know, he's just been frustrated with everything going on. Great way to end the episode. Granted, you know there's no way you're going to be able to walk away from that. You beat the shit out of the guy. It's like, you know that's going to draw some unwanted attention. That's going to be a whole hassle. And it's just like, Marty wasn't thinking about it. He didn't care. Everybody's, like, anger's got the best of him with just everything going on. So, we shall see where all of this ends up taking us. Going forward into the next episode. But uh, really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.